Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We have been working on this Bally Flip Flop for what seems like months, but really it's just been a couple days. And uh, we are now to the point where we're going to test it out and then repair whatever we find screwed up on it. So when we got it, we did a video just kind of showing what it was like. Then we did a video where we were fixing or cleaning everything in the, uh, the bottom, the body of it. And then we did a video whenever we were fixing everything in the back box. That took a while. And then we did a video of us doing the play field. That took a while. When we were doing the back box one, we had basically finished cleaning everything or whatever. Um, we started the game up, and the left pop bumper caught on fire. Literally caught on fire. There was smoke pouring out of it. So if you didn't see that video, go back and check it out. Uh, so I believe we have that fixed. But I don't really know why it did that in the first place. I, there, something must have been stuck or something. I don't know. So we really got to watch that. That will be the very first thing that we're paying attention to. The whole time, I'm going to have my good eye on the left pop bumper, okay? So if you see smoke start pouring out of it, let me know, okay? It took forever to fix that thing, too. I mean, to put it all back. It melted the, the, the blades on the thing. I didn't even film it. Ugh, such a pain. But uh, we'll see if it does that again. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the game and see what's broke. And then we're going to write down what's broke on our list. Now, we had a... We had a, uh, a uh, viewer named Mr. Kludge who sent us these. And so he designed this little caricature of uh, me working on a pinball machine. Let me fix the focus here. You know, what he messed up is he didn't put, like me, uh, constantly frustrated with the camera <laughs> on there. So there should be like a tripod over here, but I can't draw. I'm left-handed, people. There should be a tripod on the floor like this. Maybe with one of the legs bent a little bit. <laughs> right? Little thing. With steam coming up out of it. Because I kicked it. <laughs> well, yeah, that's pretty cool. So we're going to write down on this the stuff we got to do. Now, we, we haven't retired Mr. Minge's pads. We'll bring those back later. <laughs> um, I'm going to see him soon. I'm going to ask him how he pronounces his last name. So the first thing that I need to do is we're going to try to start a game. And I'm going to start a four-player game. Just so we can test everything. Why not? Why not do that? Or maybe I should just start a... We'll just start a one-player game. Uh, last time on about the second ball, that was already smoking. So we're going to start it, see if it starts, and then we'll keep watching that. So I've got a ball in there. Let's see if it'll do anything. I, I reset one of the uh, score reels to 10 points just so it would have something to reset. All of the flips reset it. Reset. I'm dead serious about this damn pop bump, right? <laughs> I could smell it before, before it uh, died on us. Now I'm paranoid about it. And you, you may not know this, but whenever you're working on these like this, you start seeing things. So like just a second ago, I was like, oh, I think I see smoke. No, I don't see smoke. Okay, so we kicked the ball out. It reset the one score reel that wasn't on zero back to zero. Everything started. It says one to four players can play and that we're on ball number one. Perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to randomly hit stuff and we'll see if it does what it's supposed to do. Um, our bonus is reset to a thousand. That's probably right. I think the first thing I'll do is hit the pop bumper. <laughs> Uh oh. Oh, it worked. It worked. Whew. For a minute there, I was worried. <laughs> okay, so was it giving us 100 points? So we're at 1120. 
twelve twenty, and then this one thirteen twenty. By the way, you're not hearing any chimes because the chime box is out of it. Killing two birds with one stone. One, I know I got to work on that anyway. And two, I had people complain. Oh, it's so loud. Now I can see why they took the bell out. Oh, it's, it's slightly out of tune. Oh, oh my butt hurts. It's, this is the type of crap I get from viewers. Okay, uh, 1320. Not all viewers. Not all viewers. <laughs> so this one should be worth 500. We're at 1320. 1820. 500, 2320, Psh, perfect. All right, so I'm gonna hit these little stand-ups. 10, 10, 10, 10. Usually if your stand-ups work, they'll all work because they're all usually connected together on these really old ones. Uh, this says special when lit. Let's see what it does when it's not lit. 100, and this one, 100, 25, 60. Okay, so uh, same thing here, 10 points, 10 points. Okay, so these say 500, 5,000 when lit, but they're on 500. We're at 2580. 30, 90, but I think, did I just hit that? I think I did. Yes, okay, so 500. Uh, 3590, let's go to the next one. <laughs> 4090, if you hit that, it flips. And if you hit this one, it flops. Okay, uh, 4090, 4590, 5090, huh. What do you know? Let's see what happens when you hit these. 50, 90. Whoa. 10 points. And 10 points on that one. Okay. Do I smell smoke? I don't believe I do. <laughs> um, mushroom bumper. Let's see what it does when you hit it. It's not lit or anything. We're at 52, 50. Gave me 500 points, which it should have. 57.50, 62.50. Boy, this thing's working pretty good. Okay. What in the world do these do? It tried to flip, but it hit my hand. 73.50. 73.50. Well, 8450, 8550, 86.50. So maybe it gives you, hmm, how did I get 10 points? Maybe when it flips off that, it gives you 10 points. 8850, let's hit the next one. 1100, that can't be right. 9950, let's try the next one. Give me a thousand, but it hit my hand too, so I don't know about this man. I don't know about this man. So I'll give you a hundred points when you hit them now. And they all flipped over. Hmm. Okay, let's see what happens when we hit these. Thousand, 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 thousand. Okay. Resetting the flips advances the bonus four. So I don't know how I've been advancing the bonus. So if I hit these, it should reset the flips. And it should advance the bonus up to 10,000. Um, but we're at 17,250. So let's see what that happens. So what happens with that? So I got 500 points because that's what you get for hitting this. And it did reset all of them and it did advance us four. Okay, so let's try that again and see about the scoring again. What happens if I hit the top ones first? 17,750. 
What in the hell? Okay, so that is advancing the bonus. But I think I'm getting 1,100 points every time that happens. I don't know if it's right or not. Hmm. Well, let's read and see if that's right. Maybe it'll tell us. Mushroom bumpers light to reset flips when all flips are made. I mean, they're all doing the same thing. One bonus advance for each flip. Hmm. Okay, so there's a way to figure this out. We can look on the schematics. Top buttons score 1100. What's that all about? Um, but so far, everything else seems to be working pretty good. Let's see if that's consistent. Um, 22,750. 23,750. Maybe it's because I'm doing it with my hand instead of the ball. 24,750. 25,850. But that one, you know, I didn't do it quite the same, you know. We got the same player shoots again. Pop bumper worked. Same player shoots again. Also lit on the back box. Counting down our bonus. check to see if the bonus is counting down round. I believe it is. Same player shoots again. It, let me do that twice. That's not... That might have been a mistake. Alright, ball one. Ball and play too light doesn't work. Extra ball holds over. Or it seemed to. It may have been because I only hit the flip, so sometimes they have it set up. The shooter's a little weird too. That probably needs rebuilt. Uh, Sometimes they have it set up where only a certain thing will advance the uh, ball. Ball and play three. Let's see what happens here. Boy, everybody's going to love those unorthodox outlanes. I can hear the complaints already. four, ball five, double bonus when lit, okay the game is over, it reset the flips, alright so that's cool, alright so uh, seems like everything's cool, let's check the, uh, let's check the bonus reset just to make sure that's working how it should, so we're going to do it again, Set everything to zero. That's cool. All right, so we're going to get the bonus up, which one didn't reset. Uh huh. Three's not resetting. What'd y'all do to three? Three not. Resetting. Okay, so we have. Well, hell, I got to try this. 
extra ball when lit. So let's see if that works. It does. Two birds, one stone. Okay, so uh, ball and play number one. We've got a 19,000 point uh, bonus. So we should have 39,200 by the end. Perfect. The little click click you're hearing down here too is it's turning off the as the score motor turns it's turning off the uh, the coin uh, mechs because if you put a quarter in right as the score motor's turning it may not register so it actually turns off the door while it's doing that. Okay, uh, so same player shoots again. We need to see if it's going to end that. So the ball shoots up, flips one of them. It's still it. Flips and or hits that one. Flips that one. It's still it. Flips that one. It's still it. I'll bet whenever you get about ten points or a hundred points, it will turn it off. No. Nope. Yeah. See, that's definitely an issue. So basically, it's going to give you an extra ball twice. The second time it's turning it off. Interesting. Extra ball holds over one time. That will help us figure it out on the schematics. Uh, all of our bonus seems to be working. Thousand points. Yes, yeah, so everything's cool. We need to try it with a two player, three player, and four player, I guess. So let's see. We got a one player game. We now have a two player game. See, it lit up the other. Uh, <laughs> Covered wagon that says two can play, three can play, four can play. All right, so the first player, let him play. Boy, he's probably pretty good. Moved over to two can play. over to three can play. Now you need to go through and check all the score reels on those too just to make sure that everything's rolling over basically. Yeah I definitely gotta do the shooter. The shooter rod is crap. Move back to one can play. Unknown caller calling. Not tonight, Pennsylvania. Call back later. We're closed anyway. It's too late. It's like 10 o'clock. Anyway, uh, ball and play number two light definitely doesn't work. We already tested the player one score reels. We'll test two, three, and four, and then we'll be ready to fix stuff. All right, so this is how I test them. You're just trying to see if they'll roll over. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and so it's 3,400 if I hit 500. 39, 44, and the three went to a four on the thousands. So. Everything's rolling over like it should. Very cool. Oh, I should write down that buzzing relay. Okay, reset the third one that time. Okay, uh, buzzing. This is the flip relay. One of them. Flip relay. Okay, uh, shooter rod. Um, what else have we found? Okay, third player.
Perfect. 3,400, 3,900, 4,400. All those are rolling over perfect. Perfect. Pop bumper seems to be repaired, but we're gonna keep watching it. When we tilt the plate field up, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can actually, I can show you what I think it was. 3,000. All right. So that's rolling over well. 3,700. 4,200. Okay, see that? So the thousand won't score in this ball. But now it was scoring fine. All right, so something going on with the thousand points on the four player. <sighs> All right, so. Uh, I think we're looking pretty good. So, uh, look, it didn't reset the three again. All right, so that gives us a good base to start with. We'll start working through the stuff. Let me get the schematics, and we'll see what we can figure out. Do you have any ideas of what's causing what so far? Huh? Think about it a little bit. We'll figure it out. Okay, so on my computer, I have a copy of the schematic, and it's a long, continuous schematic. You can download a lot of these. Not Gottlieb's, but you can get Bally's uh, and a lot of the Williams ones, whichever ones have been scanned and are available from the IPDB.org website. And so they have this one. I downloaded it. And so now I have a full schematic of the machine. And the different companies did theirs differently, but Bally, this is a 1976. So it's one of the later ones, which means it's much more com complex than some of the other machine, the early machines. So they have a ton of things in it. And so the way they did theirs is this uh, down here that you're looking at. We'll zoom in here in a minute, but I just want to show you an overview first. This is the transformer. So the power's coming in, and it turns on the transformer. And then they have uh, three separate lines drawn. So they have, well, four actually. They have one, this area down here is like the lights. So the different lights that light up. Uh, this line represents the neutral of the AC. And this line represents the solenoid voltage. Oh, I've got that backwards. Or do I? I think I've got that right. But anyway, this one line continues down to here. And then the other line wraps all the way around because that's a way for them to use a smaller piece of paper <laughs> but have twice as much stuff on it. So all of this is solenoids that turn on and do different things, you know, via switches. And this as well. So you kind of need to find uh, specifically what you're looking at. So the first thing that I'm going to do is we're going to look on our list of stuff that we've uh, written down that has a problem. So uh, the first thing, the top buttons are scoring 1,100 points. I believe I know why it's doing that, but I'm going to find that on the schematic, and then we'll see why, what's up with that. Okay, so here on the schematics, here is the number one rollover button. See how it says a little number two underneath it? That's because there's two of them. So that was what we were hitting. So whenever you hit those, the flip relay in its normal position it has a normally closed switch right there. So because that is closed, when you hit that button with the ball, it connects power down through here. and turns on the number one target relay. So all of these get confusing because of the names. So you hit the button. Since the flip relay is normally is not pulled in yet, it hits the number one target relay, okay? So when it hits the number one target relay, I'm trying to figure out the best way to explain this. When the relay pulls in, 
this switch connects because it's on the number one target relay that just came in, which connects power. through the bonus unit end of stroke switch. So basically it is eventually going to pull in the bonus unit because you get a thousand points every time you flip the flip, right? So once it once this bonus unit pulls in, it hits another switch on the bonus unit that is the end of stroke switch that opens this and kills power through this switch to the number one target relay. So how else can you hold on the number one target relay really? if you're pressing if you've still got your hand on the button, right? Or if the ball is still on the button, which shouldn't usually happen, right? So when a ball rolls over, it should go over it fast enough that it's only on it for a split second, right? Okay, so when the number one target relay pulls in, it holds itself on. Now, uh, remember we already. Uh, Oh no, we didn't. Okay, here we go. So the number one target relay being held in closes this switch, which connects power to the thousand point relay and you score a thousand points. This should have like a dot on it showing that they're intersected like that one does. But they clearly are because there's no other, there's nothing else these lines aren't touching anything but that, so they just left the dot out, but it should have a dot on it. So now that your number one target relay is on, you score the thousand points. All right, so that's where the first thousand comes from. Moving right along. We may have moved too far. No, we didn't. We did not. Here we are. We have landed at our at our at the end of our journey. <laughs> also, the number one target relay, another switch on it, connects power through a, a normally closed switch on the number one flip relay. Okay? So since that's closed because the flip relay is not on yet, it hits the number one flip solenoid with the juice. So the flip solenoid is what actually flips the target. So it, pow, flips the target. So when the target flips over on the play field, physically, it lands on a switch, which is called the number one flip switch. The number one flip switch connects power to the number one flip relay and turns it on. And it stays on because... The number one flip, it's, it sits on that switch on the play field. So it turns on the number one flip relay, which stays on. Okay. Well, since it stays on, it opens up. So see, this one's normally closed. Well, now that it's energized, this switch is over to here. Right? So now it's over here. And so the flip solenoid that made the... the thing flip over is no longer energized through the target relay, right? So it turns off the flip solenoid, but it leaves on the number one flip relay. Well, back where we were. Now, The number one re rollover button, if the ball perchance or my finger would still be sitting on it, this has now changed over to here because the number one flip relay is now turned on because the flip flag is laying on top of it, right? So now it's connected. So it connects over this way. You have that little line there that says that it connects to there and gives you 100 points. So basically, there's no, the only, there's no way for it to 
not score 100 points if you just happen to still be on the button. So if you if you press the button a little bit too long, you're going to get 1,100 points. Now, it didn't seem to me like the flag had flipped all the way over, but maybe it had. <laughs> it's all going so fast, right? So if you get 1,100 points sometimes by that button, eh, it's not the end of the world. It just means it's all working real fast. So I think all of that is working just fine. So top button score 1,100 points. That one's no big problem. Ball and play too light. That's just going to be the bulbs loose. Um, extra ball hold over one turn. That sounds like a fun to figure, uh, fun one to figure out. Let's figure that out. Okay, here's the extra ball relay. This just runs off to the plug where if you get the high score, uh, you win an extra ball, uh, or you can change the plug to where you win a free game. But uh, basically, there's there several different ways to get an extra ball. Um, as basically, as you build up the bonus unit, eventually it turns on the opportunity. Once you get up to this certain point, where if you land in the uh, left or right hole, you win an extra ball. And so whenever you do it, pulls in this extra ball relay. And so whatever made that happen after that point is irrelevant because the extra ball relay holds itself on through a switch on itself. That is, see how they have the little jumper over that wire so it doesn't count. Um, and it gets power once it's holding itself on through score motor 6E, which is a normally closed in the in the sitting position, like whenever it's just sitting there, 6E is normally closed. So it gets power through that. So whenever the score motor starts turning, that will eventually open up, which would kill that switch. But it also gets power through the out hole relay. So if the out hole relay has not been turned on, then uh, it will not kill power. So if the out hole relay is open, uh, you know, has, has been put on so that it opens that switch and the score motor turns around till that switch opens, it will kill both of the sources of power so that the extra ball relay can no longer hold itself on and it will turn off. So for whatever reason, it's doing it after the ball goes through twice, <laughs> which is interesting. So I think it's a timing issue where for whatever reason, these never open up at the same time. So I'm going to go look at both of those switches and just see if one of them's like a little too close or whatever. I'm also going to make this one a little wider so that it, it is a, a little farther apart so that whenever it does let go, sometimes if they're too close together, if like whenever it opens all the way up, if they're still really close, what that means is that when the power is killed to it, the coil lets go and this switch starts opening up, but it's so tight that it doesn't open till just the end. And by then, the score motor may be back to around to where it's closing itself. And right before it, right before it's no longer touching, it clamps it back down. So it might be something like that. So I'm going to make that a little wider where it's just barely touching whenever it's on. And then do the same with that and the same with that. And it should fix it. If not, it might be some of this stuff. Maybe... Maybe one of these is sticking or something or whatever, but uh, we'll go. I'll look at those switches and see if I find one that's that's uh, looks bent or out of shape or it's closing too much or something. Okay, I think we got it. So we're going to test it. Let's turn on the extra ball. You do by building the bonus up. Eventually one of these will light up. Okay, so this one's lit. It'll do it on the other one, too. It depends on wh what position the, the uh, bonus is on. It'll light up this side or this side. They alternate. Okay, so it lands in there. Turned on the extra ball. We lose the ball. We should lose the extra ball. Look, it should go off and just let us play again. We're on ball number one. Still on ball number one. Cool. All right. So the uh, let me show you the reason that it was doing that. But I, I figured it all out. We're good. Let me make sure I can get this one to light up. Yeah. See now that one's lit. Okay. Cool. So let me show you in the schematics what the problem was. Okay. So the extra ball relay was turning on, and then it was holding itself on through a switch on itself. I checked, and that was adjusted pretty good. 
and then uh, it should drop out whenever the score motor opens and the out hole relay are open at the same time, right? So the out hole relay, uh, the way it works is it's over here, out hole relay is turned on by a bunch of stuff. So if the switch falls in the out hole and the score motor is not turning at the moment, um, the bonus zero relay, blah, 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 the ball index relay, it can, it can connect through those. But uh, basically, once it's held on, it holds itself on through a switch on itself. So what was happening was, this switch was adjusted really far out. It was touching, but just barely. So what was happening was, this was opening up almost immediately whenever the power died. So whenever this opened, this would almost immediately open because it's a physical thing. So like the, the relay pulls in and moves the switch a little bit, right? So if it's, if it's real far apart and it's just barely touching it, as soon as power drops to the relay, it starts moving back open, right? And so it immediately loses power, right? If, but if, it's, if they're adjusted really close to where as soon as it pulls in, they're close, then whenever it drops power, it's still connected until just the last second, right? So that's what was going on. The out hole relay was dropping out so quick that it was closing itself again. So that's a normally closed, right? So whenever it's pulled in, that's open. So when the ball's sitting in the uh, um, the out hole on the out hole switch, uh, this should be open. And so this is turning, blah, 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 blah. There's a little bump that it hits, an impulse that opens that, right? But what was going on was basically the out hole relay, it was really easy for it to fall back to that being closed. So that's why it was, I noticed after I messed with it a little bit that sometimes it would give you four free balls in a row and then blah, blah, blah. But so by opening that, by making that tighter so that it held together longer like it's supposed to, uh, it's now really uh, reliable, and you only get one extra ball. So it was a timing issue, but it wasn't those two that I was thinking. It was a little farther back. All right. Now the three not resetting. Huh. Let's mess with that a little bit. There must be a switch or something. Uh, that may be the uh, that may be the uh, the Jones plug inside of it or something. But we'll go look through that. Okay, the ball and play number two thing was just a loose bulb. The sockets in the back back box of these ballys of this era are not that great. They like they get bent to where the bulb is real loose in them. You have to go in there and rebend the the metal. There's like a little finger looking thing that touches the center of the bulb on the back. You have to go in there. That basically gets bent over time. You have to bend it back on all of them. So I bent it back a little bit, make it hold a little tighter. That's that. The number three relay, the number three flip, seems to be working pretty good. But, whenever you have intermittent stuff like that that is connected to a Jones plug, it's usually the Jones plug. So we're going to take that Jones plug connector on the bottom of the play field and uh, clean them really good and then reinsert them. And I think that will probably fix that. Whenever it's an intermittent problem like that, usually it's a bad connection somewhere. So here is the Jones plug connector. Clean that, put it back in. I believe that's going to take care of that. And re remember that one time whenever uh, the fourth player, well, <laughs> the fourth player wasn't giving me a thousand points when I was hitting that one target. It's the same thing. It's all plugged in through these Jones plugs. So I'm gonna blame that on the Jones plug too. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play back through it just to test to make sure, but. So now we're up to, we've got the shooter rod. It's just crap. Just janky. That's a good word for that. We'll see if we can fix that. Whoa, hell, I hit the flipper. <laughs> okay. Which brought to our attention the buzzing flip relay. Not flipper relay, the flip relay. So... Let me angle this down so that we can get a good look at those relays and I can show you what's going on with those. 
All right, I'm gonna show you a little trick with buzzing relays. So basically, these are the four flip relays. They're all on, and those are the ones that are held on when the target is actually sitting on the switch. So if I take the target off the switch, well, actually when it hits the switch, the down switch, the relay uh, goes on. Okay, so notice that whenever I hit this number four one, the sound doesn't change. Okay, number three. Number two. You know what that means? Number one's the buzzy one. Notice that it is the one that is a different color wrapper. On these EMs, whenever there's a problem, usually you don't have to replace anything. You just need to fix it. Right? So somebody's already had this problem, and they already swapped the coil, and it didn't fix it. Or they put in the wrong coil or something like that, which means it's more problem for us. Don't do that. Ah! Okay, so if the thing is noisy, sucks if it's the one you can't get to either. If it's noisy, what you want to do is carefully see if you can physically manipulate it to not be noisy. So like if I hold it closed, it's not noisy. Okay, so I'm going to show you what's going on on this outside one because it's easier to get to. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to turn on this one and it's quiet. So it is on, but it's dead quiet. Okay, so watch what happens when I play with it though. So a lot of times people think, oh, it's buzzing because the relay, the, the coil's burning up or whatever. It has nothing to do with that. What's going on is it's fighting me. So the, the way the relay works is there's a magnet right here that pulls this um, latch flat, right? So if it can't pull this all the way flat like it is right now, like look, it is dead flat against that magnet. If it can't pull that flat, then it basically it buzzes because it's vibrating because the magnet is trying to pull that flat but can't quite get it, right? So if I, what I'm doing is pulling it out a little bit to fight it. And so it's going, trying to pull the thing in, right? So the reason this one is buzzing is because something's fighting it. It's not able to get a nice, clean, flat pull on it, okay? So it could be this spring up here is misadjusted. So see that spring, if I mess with that too, it does the same thing. Like if that spring is too tight or too strong, it's basically trying to pull this out while that's trying to pull it that way and it makes it vibrate. Or if this is dirty, so dirty as in rusty. So if this plate gets rusty, the magnet can't quite do its thing and get it to lay flat like it wants it to. And so it's just constantly fighting it and it makes the, the thing vibrate. So what you need to do is take that plate off by removing this uh, spring and it just kind of wallow, kind of pops out of there. Um, take that plate off and clean it. So I'll pop it out and we'll see if it looks real rusty or anything. Come on, people. Come on now. Come on, people. I mean, come on, come on, people. People get ready. Pe come on, people. That ain't going to work. Pe come on, people. People, that ain't going to Come on now. Okay, so I cleaned it all up with a wire brush. It looks like what happened just from the condition of that and also the uh, the burnt marks on the plastic there. This The other coil must have burnt up, so they didn't just replace it because it was buzzing. 
Now, whenever you do this, you also want to clean the actual magnet. Let's get that nice and shiny too. And then hopefully that thing will work better and not buzz. We'll see. Okay. Much better. Now, this is the place where you got to use your common sense. Now, listen, listen very carefully. You can barely hear it, man, but it's way down inside the cabinet. That's as good as it's going to get. Don't worry about it. It's because that that uh, armature, the, the plate, isn't plated anymore, you know, so it's it's not quite exactly how it's supposed to be, but I guess you could try to find another used one that's 40 years old and swap it out if you want to. It really bothers you. But it was very, very loud before, so hopefully uh, we have calmed that down. Now, just because a coil looks burnt does not mean that it's bad, right? And it also doesn't mean that it will buzz. You saw this one doesn't buzz, and look at this. The lock coil there looks horrible, but it's on right now. It's not buzzing or anything. It works perfect. No problems. It's just the, the, the paper being burnt doesn't mean that the coil burnt up. It just means that it was hot. And the lock uh, coil gets hot because it's always on. So I believe that's going to fix the buzzing relay. We're on to the shooter rod. And then playing it and seeing if everything plays fine. Seems like it does. This is the shooter rod that is installed on the cabinet, and it's the correct one. Uh, I'm looking on planetarypinball.com. They have a, all of the parts manuals scanned in. They sell some of the parts um, and own the license for the uh, Bally and Midway reproduction stuff. But this is the shooter rod assembly that we've got. So what's going on is we have the knob and rod. It's fine. The spring's pretty worn, but a lot of people replace the springs. It doesn't really help them usually. But I'm about to replace the spring. <laughs> so if the thing is all broke up, that might help it. But the problem I've got is there's a little too much wobble in this guide assembly. So I was looking in here to see if there is a bushing that goes inside of it, and there's not. This is one of the earlier ones that doesn't have a bushing. So it's just this metal piece. The rod goes through it. There's a spring with a spring cup at each end of the spring, and then there is a ring at the end, a clip. And uh, all of that's there. It's just got a lot of slop in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this spring because it does look pretty worn out, and I'm hoping maybe that will make it a little more stiff. You can play it with it how it is. It's just it's not quite right. It's a little, little wallowed out. Okay, folks, so we got the shooter rod working a little better, and now we are down to pretty much this, uh, this uh, chime unit. So it's a little bit different than the Williams ones. Basically, they were all suing the hell out of each other, so they couldn't infringe on each other's patents. So it's very similar, but lots, you know definitely different. So for instance, this one hits the chimes right in the middle where the Williams one hits the chimes on the end. You know. <laughs> they would do stuff like that so that they couldn't get sued. That one's kind of dead. It looks like someone has replaced them at some point, but I don't know that for sure, but this stock could be a replacement stuff. So whenever you get them, basically what you're trying to do is isolate them from hitting metal. If they hit metal, it makes them clanky and not sound right, like this one. So the way you need to do that is the supports that hold them need to have rubber under it, through it, so that the, the edge of the, of the uh, coil... I mean, if the plate doesn't hit it, and on top of it, so that the nut doesn't hit it. And so if, if this is only touching rubber, and it's a little loose, it'll peel out like, it, like it's supposed to.
So you just got to clean them up and get them where they're <laughs> suspended properly. You can mess around with making them tighter and looser, but basically you want them a little, a little loose, but you don't want them to have any ability to hit metal. If you make it too loose, it'll slap the metal here and it deadens the sound. So uh, they make these grommets. You can actually buy these. Um, or you can kind of make your own out of just using old or old or new uh, pinball rings. So I'll take it, I'll clean it up a little bit and take it apart and show you what it looks like underneath here. So at some point they have replaced this screw for whatever reason. I have no clue why. And when they did, they bent the plate all up. So what that's doing is it's making it where that middle one, which had been turned around, see where the thing has been hitting it on both sides. But whenever that was mounted, or is this even the one? Yes, that's the one. Whenever that was mounted, it was a little bit higher than that, but whenever it would reverberate, it would hit that raised up lip. Um, which is deadening the sound. So I'm going to clean this, and then I'm going to beat that flat <laughs> without breaking the plastic. That'll be fun. Well, I believe I'll take the plastic out. How about that? So I'll take the plastic piece off and then bend that back flat and then put it back so that we can get a nice little flat spot for it to lay on. These are the little plungers that hit the, hit the pieces. The grommets are pretty messed up, but if you put this back in on the bottom, it'll keep the screw from grounding out on the, or uh, deadening itself on the thing, so I think that'll work pretty good. So, I'll take this off and uh, bend that back flat, we'll clean it up a little bit, and then see what we can do. Much better! Let's see what she sounds like. Oh yeah! Alright, so I'm going to put the second one in. They clean up pretty nice with a little magic eraser. It magically erases all the dirt off of it. Okay, I'm going to show you what I mean about making it too tight. So this one, with the original bushings, is a little loose. But that's how it's supposed to be. This one, I've made new bushings, and I've got it tight. So listen to the difference in the sound. It's, it's too, what do they call that? Attenuated. <laughs> it's, it's got a damper on it. So you want it a little loose, right? So if it's a little loose, on to the third one. All right, I think we got it pretty good. What do you think? So we're going to go put it back in the machine. It just simply plugs in. we got to clean these Jones plugs off a little bit before we do that. But we'll just plug it back in and then we'll play it a little bit and see how it sounds. And there ain't much left to do to the machine. Hopefully it's uh, up and running. All right, let's, let's see how the chimes sound. Okay, so like on a game this old, usually there's no startup chime thing. They could probably do that, but they'd have to dedicate... Look, i got still got chime box stuff on me. They, they could probably do that, but they'd have to dedicate like a whole wheel on the stepper unit. I mean on the uh, score motor with those little bumps on it. Someone was asking about that. You could put switches. It would be very hard to do because you, to make it do different... To make it play a little melody, you'd have to basically make it a music box, so you'd have to have 
really you need three um, cogs on that cams on that uh, score unit. So then you'd have to make a special score unit just for that. I don't know. I, you could probably make an assembly with just three, um, with just three cams on it. But then you'd need a motor to run it if you didn't have it attached to the score motor. So it's just. I'm not going to say that none of them have a startup melody or any kind of melody that plays. There probably are some, but it was probably quite an accomplishment. All right, so we'll see if we get any. Uh, we'll see if we get any kind of uh, chimes. Watch it flip and flop, people. It's flipping and it's flopping. Watch this. Oh, that was slick. Ball one was pretty cool. There we go. <laughs> the one didn't reset. The one didn't reset. You can't really hit it coming out of the... All right, I got 104,100 points. That's pretty good. All right, so there you go. I saw a couple little things that I still need to work on, but uh, it's playing pretty decent. So uh, I'll do another video where I show just a general overview, and then we'll play through it in depth and uh, see how fun it is. But this is going to be a high-scoring game. Looks like another fun time from Bally. Let's give a hand for Bally in 1976. Boy, they were fantastic. I got a whole row of Bally's here that I'm working on. Night Rider Freedom and Flip Flop. So we'll do those uh we'll do those soon. I got a bunch of other Bally stashed away too. Don't worry about it. I'll never run out of them. I got plenty of them. Don't worry about it. So leave your comments below, let us know what you think. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. Um we'd like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon links. If you don't know about that, there is a link down below to Amazon in several different countries. 
if you go buy anything on Amazon, if you click our link first, it gives us a tip. So thank you to everybody that's been doing that. Uh, and also check out my brother Donnie, which is my brother's channel. Literally my brother Donnie. He and I are always into something. So go check that out. Lately we've been working on a uh, an old grocery store that we bought in this small town. This little tiny grocery store, very inexpensive. We didn't spend a bunch of money. Um, this little tiny building that we bought in a this old uh, town in, in uh, South Carolina. And we're trying to fix it up and rent it out to help revitalize the downtown area. So go check that out if that sounds fun to you. He's crazier than I am. He does a lot of like small engine repair and things like that too. So he's always filming something interesting. And also, have you heard? We now have merchandise that you can buy if you'd like. So our first couple items you may be able to see down below our videos here on YouTube or on our store on YouTube. Uh, so look out for that if you're interested. We have like uh, some canvas prints that hang on the wall and some t-shirts and stuff like that. And we're going to be designing and releasing other stuff soon. We're just trying to make sure that we uh, we get something that's cool to uh, look at and it's not the uh, the run-of-the-mill stuff. If we can help it, you yeah. um, know. So check that out if you're interested in that. But leave your comments down below. Give us a thumbs up. Always an odd number of thumbs up, by the way. Never even. If you give a thumbs up and then another one, it takes away. It doesn't let you do it over and over again. I don't know why, but... Always an odd number of thumbs up. So we appreciate everybody that hung out with us tonight. This is a long video. The next one will be us uh, playing it. So we'll see you on that one.